Hey, what's up? Quattro here, and today we're gonna be taking a look at how to create little rocks, stones, or pebbles for your 3D needs. Now, for example, you may want to liven up your interior scene with a vase full of kind of little colorful pebbles, or maybe you want to pave a path on an architectural exterior scene using realistic looking rocks. Um, if so, this tutorial is just for you. And especially beginners are going to pick up on a couple of useful techniques uh, like texturing or material creation as well as recoloring textures inside of 3ds Max using the um, color correction filter so that kind of saves you a little bit of time um, you know you don't have to go to Photoshop to do your kind of texture adjustments which is also which is um, always useful um, anyway so let's jump into 3ds Max I'm working in 3ds Max 2014 but you can use any version of 3ds Max you have cause as far as I know they're gonna have the exact same tools that I have um, right here so anyway I'm gonna start by creating a, a box I'm gonna check the cube selection which is gonna create a cube and for my segments I'm gonna use 10 by 10 by 10 uh, which is gonna give me quite a dense cube now for this kind of um, demonstration I'm not gonna matter I'm not gonna worry about real-world scale but, you know, if you're using this for architectural work, you might want to um, start scaling your things right now. Or maybe later at the last step. It's up to you. Um, so I'm going to go to my modifier stack then and add a spherify modifier, which is going to turn my cube into a sphere. And the reason behind that is if I apply a texture onto this spherified cube, then it is actually going to tile much better than on an actual sphere and I'm gonna show you that um, later on in the video so we've spherified our cube but if I exit the shaded edges mode uh, you see that I'm having kind of these shading issues with hard edges so to quickly remedy that I'm gonna go to edit poly select all my polygons I'm just gonna quickly switch to ID 1 for all of the polygons and also gonna click the auto smooth to give all of the polygons a single smoothing group so that way all of my shading is gonna be uniform which is exactly what I want now for the material itself I've actually picked up a texture um, of, a, of a real kind of like a photo rock texture which is really really nice and looks really good on this kind of a project and to find it you can just go to cgtextures.com which is an on online uh, library of free textures and they're royalty free you can use them any way you want commercially or uh, for your own projects uh, obviously you can't resell them but for any kind of work it's uh, it's just an irreplaceable source really so to find the texture that I'm using you can go to the rock um, library here and it's in the smooth category and it's situated on the fourth row at the moment which is this texture and if you're a premium member to cgtextures.com you get a really high resolution image but I'm gonna be using a 700 by 700 free user um, texture so back in 3ds max i'm going to open up the material editor um, if yours doesn't look quite the same um, probably using the slate material editor i don't really like that so i'm using the compact one but exactly the same thing is going to be um, possible with um, either one so since i'm using eye ray or mental ray whichever you want to prefer you're gonna select a shader which is corresponding to, to your favorite rendering engine. For me, it's gonna be Arc and Design. And in the diffuse slot, I'm gonna quickly load up my texture. And it looks like that. So I'm gonna click this button to show the texture in the viewport and assign it to my sphere. Now instantly you see that the sphere looks pretty good. I mean, there's very little very little error in the seaming which is exactly what we want I mean that edge is pretty much seamless and anything on the sides is also seamless and we're seeing very very little error at the bottom here actually pr 
pretty much nothing is that well that little edge but you know for an untrade eye it's not going to be visible at all so that's what it looks like on our sphere on our spherified cube if you will and the reason why I didn't apply that to a sphere directly is because a sphere like I said has a different geometry type and also a different mapping type so if I apply the same texture there we're getting this really nasty kind of pinching at the top and um, stretching in the middle and you know this cube just looks much much better and you know when creating rocks or any kind of texture work really you just want to go with a seamless um, pattern so after we've done that I'm also gonna uh, just double click on that so our window is a little bigger and I'm gonna copy this texture by clicking on the M clicking copy I'm gonna place it in the reflectivity slot as an instance and I'm also gonna place it in the bump slot as an instance as well for bump I'm gonna be using about 0.8 or so which is a value that works well with my scene and for reflectivity I kind of like the wet stone look so I'm gonna go with about 0.5 with a glossiness value of about 0.5 as well which gives that kind of spread reflection but it doesn't kill it completely and obviously since it's a rock it's a good idea to increase the roughness to about 0.7 or so that's gonna be a really basic material setup which is gonna work for our scene so now onto the modeling itself um, select uh, sphere and the way I like to do it personally is by adding an FFD box modifier um, you can find different variations of it 2x2, two 3x3 two, three three, or 4x4 four four, but the FFD box which I have on my quick slot here uh, actually allows you to control how many numbers of points you want so in my case it's gonna be 4x4x4 four by four by four is perfectly fine so either one you want to use it's perfectly fine so I'm gonna just kind of open up um, the uh, modifier itself and click on the control points so I can start selecting these points and deforming our mesh so just quickly kind of squeeze squeeze the whole thing to create a flat flat stone looks like a like a cookie now um, the way I like to do it is also scaling down the front so it's got some sort of um, sharp shape to it and let's move that around possibly give it a little bulge there a little kind of dent there and maybe deforming it that way and there possibly squeezing it there so you know it's 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 all up to you you know the shape of the rock is totally up to your imagination and so let's say this is gonna be fine for what I'm doing right now and the next step I'm gonna do uh, well to be perfectly honest this is pretty much good to go really if you're from far if you're rendering from far away this is gonna be really good but you might wanna take an extra step to add some more detail in case in case you're rendering this in close-up so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you two ways to add extra detail and realism to the rocks one is by adding a turbo smooth modifier so we have a more dense mesh and adding a noise modifier on top of that and what this is gonna do is if I select fractal and kinda turn down the scale a little bit and start increasing these strength axes you see that my rock is starting to deform and if I decrease the scale a little bit more it kinda crumbles up 
which is a really nice way to kind of add a little bit of extra detail to the rock to make it look less smooth. And if I add more turbo smooth iterations, then everything is just going to be smoother and um, it's kind of more realistic, I guess. So that is one way to do it. Or the other way would be not increasing the actual geometry count, but placing a map in the displacement slot, which would at render time do the same thing and displace your geometry uh, according to the texture that you put into it. So there are two ways. It's up to you which, which one you want to use. Um, this offers you more control, I think, over the final look of it while um, the material option is kind of a render option and it doesn't impact your viewport as much. It actually can save a little bit of viewport performance by checking the render iterations and say for example if I put three there and none in there that means that in my viewport I'm only going to see that many iterations but when I'm rendering I'm gonna see that many so that's a nice way to kind of save on it so anyway um, we're pretty much done with the rock it's really as easy as that now, say for example, you're not happy with the contrast or the color of the texture. So I'm going to show you how to quickly change that. If I go to my texture slot, um, these are the texture options here. I'm just going to quickly reduce the blur to 0.1 because I don't really like my textures being blurred. And I'm going to click on the bitmap button here. And if I select color correction, and say keep old map as a sub map I'm gonna be able to change all these different parameters like the colors and the contrast and the brightness and tints of my texture right inside 3ds max without going into Photoshop so I'm just gonna bump up the contrast a little bit because I like a kinda nasty grungy look of my stone and it just gives it more depth I think so uh, my stones pretty much done and if you want to see what it looks like I can quickly unhide my scene here and let's just make sure it does not pen penetrate my glass which is never a good thing and yeah let's say that's gonna be fine and I'm rendering with iRay using an HDR map for lighting and my iRay settings are unlimited on dual GPUs and four processor cores so let's see what happens if I click render it's gonna bake in the environment and the textures and uh, we're getting somewhere so, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any tutorial requests um, regarding 3ds Max, um, After Effects, uh, Photoshop, anything really, just uh, drop me a message or leave a comment below. And uh, if you enjoy these tutorials, then please subscribe. It helps me make more of them. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time. Thank you.